I'm here with John Kenalopoulos. John, I think that I think I guess we all think that cross-linking is an an exciting and is a, a really really promising thing with the treatment of keratoconus. I've I've some real practical questions for for you. Not dealing so much with the the different protocols, but first of all, what are where where are we diagnostically with detecting ker keratoconus? And second of all. Let's say that I detect someone with keratoconus that is subclinical or is barely clinical. I'm not talking about form, form first. I'm talking about genuine keratoconus, right. but that, that they're not that that terribly sim symptomatic. When should I be thinking about going to cross-linking? How right. how how mild? Right. Uh, thank you, Josh. These are really really uh, hot questions. Uh, in my mind, with my experience in keratoconus, and it's something that I've devoted. Uh, a large part of my practice the last 20 years. Uh, the big question is we are diagnosing keratoconus based on curvature. We're all familiar with um, topography, tomography, etc. and pachymetry. The big question in my mind is which comes first? Whether in keratoconus we have first a change in curvature which results then in change in pachymetry or vice versa. And this is an, a very sensitive area as far as uh, addressing and assessing the diagnostics that are out there. Um, I think that uh, the standard criteria that we use, and even today, uh, the most standard criteria that are accepted in literature are the amsler krumai criteria, appear to be a little bit outdated for the technology that's available out there. I think there's a lot of uh, interplay between normal and from frust and early keratoconus. And it's, it's greatly important, uh, especially for the second question that you asked, once we've established that a patient has from frust or is questionably normal, for instance, the quote-unquote normal eye, uh, normal other eye of a patient who has keratoconus in one eye, how do we pick up that early change in order to make that decision to intervene with cross-linking? Um, we've worked in many models, and we really respect uh, uh, Ambrosio's and Bellin's work on um, uh, sensitizing us with pachymetry changes um, and, uh, and uh, symmetry in the cornea. But we think that uh, the epithelium has a very, very strong story to tell us. In those very early suspect eyes, normal eyes by any other means, topography, pachymetry, uh, tomography, the epithelium may have a very significant story to tell us. And we're presenting a lot of that uh, data in this meeting. And I think that once OCT is able to bring into every ophthalmologist's office the ability to get pachymetry maps and their symmetry in the cornea and easy epithelial maps, uh, we may be able to, to have a, a tighter and more sensitive way to diagnose keratoconus early. Now, as far as answering the, the second question, when do we uh, apply cross-linking? Whenever we fear there'll be progression or whenever we have established progression. I think that every, uh, in most of the world, any person who's under 35, 40, uh, is uh, uh, suspicious about progressing, especially the closer they get to puberty. So uh, if I see somebody under 20 for the first time and I see form frus keratoconus, I cannot call it form frus keratoconus because uh, it's at an age where we expect it to change. So we want to follow that patient closely. If that option is not there, I would recommend collagen cross-linking. Uh, if the patient is in the next decade, 20 to 30, uh, same things apply, but less strictly. Uh, and somebody who's over 30, in my opinion, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit more relaxed. I want to see that patient every year, every uh, year and a half. If it's a female patient who is going to go through a pregnancy, we know that that may uh, wake up uh, progression. And in people over 40, I'm, I'm much more comfortable, but uh, I still want to see them every two, three years or, if, there, or uh, if there's any change. And again, these criteria are meant for when I will make the decision to intervene with collagen cross-linking. Right, so you, 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 you want to, um, to be able to demonstrate that there's some progression before you, you cross-link. The younger the patient is, the more nervous you, you are, and the less change there has to be to, to raise a red flag to say this is someone who uh, needs treatment. Does that sound fair? It, it sounds fair, but I, I have to say that most surgeons in Europe will agree with me that if I, if I evaluate a teenager or somebody who's in their early 20s, 
and has reached the level of keratoconus 1 on Amsler Krumer right. criteria, then I would recommend intervening. If I see a very mild from Frusch case, I may wait yeah. for six months. Uh, now, these criteria become a little laxer if we go over 25 and over 30 and 35. Yeah. Yeah, the, these are really, really great guidelines, and, and I, you know, I want to thank you very much for sharing them, and, and again for being so generous with oh, your sure, time with us. Sure, today. thank you, Josh.